It's such a gorgeous fall day here in North Carolina. Let's turn some scrap wood into beautiful Christmas decor. Now, if you're like me, you have tons of scrap wood lying around. Let's put it to good use by decorating it for Christmas. And you can not only decorate your home with these items, but you can also sell them at your local craft shop. I'm not going to show you how I cut and sanded each piece of wood, but I will make sure to give you the exact measurements for each project. And so we're going to start project number one right now. So that was a fun and different little intro. You guys let me know if you enjoyed that intro or if you want me to keep it just plain and simple. For this project, we're using a decking board that is 12 inches by 5 and 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm using a wet paintbrush to apply Waverly's Antique Wax. And then I'll use a dry paper towel to blend it in and remove any excess. I allow that to thoroughly dry and I also made sure to get all of the sides of this piece. Then I'm going to use some painter's tape to tape off each of the sides right at the edge and make sure that you seal it really well right in the center. Once I have all of those in place, I'm going to use Waverly's white chalk paint and I'm going to give this two coats, allowing it to dry in between coats. Now I did wait for my paint to dry before I removed the painter's tape and this is going to create a gorgeous border that now looks like it is framed. We're going to use one of Dollar Tree's metal Christmas words and I'm giving this two coats of black chalk paint and I'm doing this on wax paper so that it doesn't stick to the surface that I'm painting on. Then we can apply this right to the center using some hot glue and just be super careful because it does make that metal lettering very hot. Then I'm going to attach two pieces of greenery. This came off of a bundle from Hobby Lobby. While that's cooling, I'm going to take some ribbon and just create a very simple bow by folding that over and using a piece of twine to tie it right in the middle, right after I pinch it. I'm going to double knot that in the back and then cut that excess twine off. Then I like to dovetail the ends. So you just fold the end pieces over and cut them at an angle. And then I'm going to attach this right in the center where the two greenery pieces meet. And then I added in a few tiny pine cones. And this project is complete and I think it is gorgeous. You guys let me know what you think. I am using a piece of four by four post. This measures four and a half inches tall and it is three and three eighths of an inch wide. Just like we did in our previous project, I'm going to apply some antique wax and then blend that in with a paper towel. Allow it to thoroughly dry and I did make sure to get all of the sides, including the top and the bottom. I'm gonna pre-drill a hole in the bottom so that I can use this hook that I already had on hand and I've already painted it to, so that it will match the wood. We are creating a stocking hanger. So you guys know how expensive these can be. There are so many different ways you can customize this depending on each person and what they like. You can use some of Dollar Tree's ornaments to decorate these. I'm going to be using Dollar Tree's deer ornament and I'm going to hot glue this directly above the hook where the stocking will hang. Then to decorate the top portion of this, I'm using some of Dollar Tree's frosted greenery. I thought this would blend in really well with the same color as the deer. I'm going to hot glue some of those greenery pieces all around the top and then just some of the greenery without the white balls on it on the opposite sides. Then I'm going to create a bow with some gingham ribbon, just like we did in our previous project, by folding that over and then tying it with a piece of twine. Now I did leave some length on the tails because I want that to flow down the sides of the stocking hanger, and I will make sure to dovetail both sides of those bows. Then I'm going to add in one more of those glittery white balls in the center, and you have a customizable stocking hanger. For this project, we are using a decking board. I have cut it into a triangle. 
it is four and three quarters of an inch across the bottom and six and a quarter inches on each side. Now you can cut all three pieces of your wood into triangles if you want them to have a little bit more spacing. I originally cut mine into triangles and then cut a piece off of the edge. So the second piece is gonna have about an inch cut off of the side, but it is eight inches tall. And the third piece is about seven and a quarter inches tall. And again, I cut a little more than an inch off of the opposite side. Now that left about three and a half inches at the bottom. For the full triangle, I am using some antique green chalk paint. I'm gonna paint this entire piece on all the sides with two coats. And then one of the triangles I am painting with a white chalk paint. Now that my green paint has dried, I'm gonna take that white chalk paint and go around all of the edges of the triangle on both sides, including all of those corners. So we're making a trio of trees, and if it went a little too fast for the measurements, you can always just pause it. That's why I thought that it would be easier if I just drew it out for you guys to show you the exact measurements. For the third one, I painted that with some antique wax, and then I went over the white paint after it had dried with the antique wax to distress all of those edges. Now I'm gonna glue these two that I cut the pieces off together, and I'm using a straight edge at the bottom to make sure I can keep them straight across the bottom so that they'll sit flat when I set them up. Then I'm going to attach the full triangle right in the middle. So this is why I cut some of that edging off. That way the peaks at the top of the tree would be closer together rather than spaced wider apart. Then I'm using an ornament from Walmart. Now this originally came with this really cute gingham bow and it got lost in transition. So I had to make one to put right at the top that's gonna cover that little hole. And then I can hot glue this right to the center. And I think this turned out beautiful, but I would love to know what you guys think. If you are enjoying today's projects and you haven't done so already, I would love for you to click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell right below this video so you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. And if you'd like to visit me on my other social media accounts, all those links are in the description box below. For this project, I am using another decking board. It is cut in the shape of a house. It measures nine and a half inches from the top to the bottom five inches across the bottom, and then four and five eighths of an inch from the bottom up to the angle. I'm also using some Dollar Tree Spanish moss. I'm going to run a bead of hot glue from each of the angles straight across and then glue the moss to that. Let the glue set up so I'm able to lift the moss up and then run glue all over the front of the board at the bottom. Then where that angle is on the side, I'm gonna glue some more Spanish moss. And again, do that on the opposite side. So no, we're not making a house. We are making a really cute Christmas gnome. Now I did not put any Spanish moss on the bottom because I want it to be able to freely stand up. I'm using some of Dollar Tree's snowballs for the nose, I'm just gonna hot glue that right on top of the Spanish moss and make sure it attaches to the wood itself. And for the hat, I'm using some of Dollar Tree's gorgeous Christmas fabric. I'm gonna cut down a piece that I know that'll be long enough to wrap around the board. Then I'm gonna run a bit of hot glue across the long end so that I'll be able to fold that over and create a really beautiful seam. Then we can attach this to the front and I'm gonna start at the center of the nose and glue it on each side. Make sure that I glue the sides down. And then when I get to the back, I will glue that at the top piece of the wood. Then I can trim off those angles at the bottom to make sure it's nice and straight across the back side. And then the extra fabric that I have at the top, I'll cut that down. Again, I'm gonna glue that to fold it over to create a really beautiful seam. And then I can glue those two pieces of fabric together. At the top of the wood, I'm gonna pinch that together and then use a piece of twine 
to tie around that to hold it and then I'll make sure I double knot it so it doesn't come apart and when I cut that excess twine off I went ahead and cut the excess fabric off so that I could take another one of Dollar Tree's snowballs to attach that right to the top of his stocking cap. If you like gnomes and you like rustic decor I think you'll really like this one. This project, I am using a four by four post. Now they are not truly four inches square. They're actually three and three eighths of an inch square. I'm using three of these. One measures 10 inches, one eight inches, and one six inches. I'm gonna give each one of these one coat of white chalk paint. I wanted mine to look a little distressed, so I'm allowing some of that wood to show through. But I am painting all sides, including the top and the bottom. Now, once the paint dries, I'm going to take some ribbon. I found this at Walmart. It is two and a quarter inch wired ribbon, and I'm gonna hot glue that at the bottom edge on one side, and then just pull it tightly and wrap it around to the other side. Then I can cut that off and then glue it there. So it should be looking something like this. So it's just gonna be wrapped all the way around, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So it's gonna look like a really beautiful Christmas present. Now I am not putting any ribbon at the bottom because I want it to sit flat when I set these up. So I'm gonna do that for all three pieces of the wood. Now of course you can use whatever color ribbon you like. Once I have all of these done, I'm gonna take some gingham ribbon. This is one inch ribbon and I'm cutting down three strips at 11 inches and one at five inches. I'm gonna hot glue the 11 inch strip into a loop. Once the glue sets, I'm going to add a dot of glue where I just glued those two pieces together on the inside. And then I can pinch it from the top down to the bottom and this is gonna create two loops. Now it might look a little weird, but don't worry, you can kind of straighten it out a little later on. You just want one loop on each side. I'm gonna do that for the other two 11 inch ribbons. And for the five inch, I am just gonna glue that into one single loop and leave it just as that one loop. Now, once all your glue sets up, we're gonna take the top of the present. Now, if it does not look you know, even, that's okay, because we didn't glue the sides down. You can straighten those up if you need to. We're gonna glue the double loop right in the center then we're gonna take our second double loop. We're gonna glue it diagonally on top of that one. Then we'll take our third one. We're gonna glue it in the opposite direction on top of that one. And then we'll take our five inch, just the one loop, and we're gonna glue it right in the center after we fluff all of our loops out. And it's gonna make a beautiful bow for the top of your present. I created the exact same bow for the other two pieces of wood, so now I have a trio of gorgeous, high-end Christmas presents. You can customize these in so many different ways by painting the wood a different color or using different ribbon, but I think these are absolutely gorgeous and I hope you like them too. For this project, we are using some two by fours, one at 10 inches, one at 13 inches, and one at 16 inches. I am painting each one of these with one coat of white paint. I'm actually using some house paint that I had left over, so you can paint it with whatever, acrylic, chalk, whatever you like. I'm painting all of the sides and the one end. The other end I left because we're gonna be taping this off and painting it a different color. So I measured up about two and three quarters of an inch on all three pieces, and then I'm gonna use a piece of painter's tape to go right above that two and three quarter inch line and wrap it all the way around the two by four. We're gonna do that for all three pieces and then we're gonna paint it black on that end. So I'm using some black chalk paint. Make sure you get all of the sides, including the very bottom portion of the two by four. Let it dry and then you can remove your tape and it leaves some really beautiful crisp lines. Now I'm using some one gallon paint stir sticks. You can get these in a pack of 10 at Lowe's. I'm gonna cut three of these down to four and a half inches. 
And then I'm going to paint each one of these with black chalk paint on all sides, including the ends. We're going to be using another 2x4, and this one is 10 inches long. I'm going to give this one coat of black chalk paint on all sides, again, including those ends. Now we're going to go back to the pieces that we painted white and black, and yes, we are making snowmen. We're going to attach those paint sticks using some hot glue. So on the smallest one, I'm going to attach that at a slant, and then the medium sized one, I'm going to attach that in a slant as well, or an angle, and I'm doing it in the opposite direction as the small one, and then the largest one, I'm just going to glue straight across. Then I'm going to use a pencil and draw out the faces for each of the snowmen. And this is where you can get really creative. I created several different faces for mine. And I'm using an oil-based Sharpie to go over the outline of each one. And then I painted the nose with a pumpkin spice acrylic paint. And then the color of the eyes, I just used a colored Sharpie. So I gave the smallest and medium-sized one blue eyes, and the larger one has brown eyes. And I used white chalk paint for the white parts of the eyes. Now we're going to create some scarves. So pick out whatever color ribbon you want. And for the medium-sized one, I'm going to tie that around right below the face and use a little bit of hot glue to attach it to one side. And then I can add a little bit more hot glue under the top piece of the ribbon to make sure both pieces of the scarf will stay on one side. Then after trimming that down, I'm going to cut small slits to make it look more realistic. And then I'll add a dot of hot glue on the back side to make sure the back part doesn't move around. For the smallest snowman, I'm going to do the exact same thing, except I'm going to attach it on the opposite side and make sure that those two pieces of the scarf flow on that side. For the largest one, I'm going to take that same colored ribbon and create a bow tie and just pinch that in the middle and tie it with a piece of twine. And then I'll wrap that twine with the same colored ribbon all the way around so you won't be able to see that. Then we can glue that one down and he has a cute bow tie. To create the buttons, I'm going to use some black chalk paint and a Dollar Tree round sponge dauber. You could certainly glue real buttons on here, but I did not have enough of the same color and size for this project. Using some snowflake stickers from Hobby Lobby, I'm going to add these to the top of the hat, and you can add as many or as little as you like. And then remember that 2x4 that we painted black? I've created a decal on my Cricut to add to the front of this. I have this as a free printable on my website, and the link to my website is in the description box below. You can print this out and trace it onto your project using a white paint pen or white chalk. We're going to be now adding each of the 2x4s on top of the 10-inch black 2x4. So I am using some hot glue to temporarily hold those in place and added the tallest one flush to the back and in the center, the smallest one flush to the side and the front, and the medium size flush to the other side and the front. Now I can pre-drill holes in each one of the 2x4s so that I can add screws to make sure everything is reinforced and will stay in place. Now I'm making sure to countersink each one of my screws so that it doesn't scratch any surface that it's sitting on. Then I'll flip that over and get that back 2x4 doing the same thing. Now this project turned out so cute and there's so many different ways that you can create these cute little snowmen by changing up those scarves, the facial expressions. You guys let me know what you think and if you have a favorite out of today's video, please let me know in the comments down below. I always love to know which one is your favorite. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me. Please take care and I will see you guys next time.